Uh, so the next talk is titled Unsupervised Person Re-Identification -identif Re by Deep Learning Tracklet Association. Uh, the authors are Min Xian Li, uh, Xian Xian Zhu, and Xiaogang Gong, and the presenter today will be Xiaogang Gong. Good morning. Um, this talk meant to be uh, given by my students, but both of them couldn't make it, so I'm stepping in last minute. So I'm going to talk about um, unsupervised person re -identification. So what is person re -identification? You have a very large open space. The objective is to search certain people, a group of individuals, against a very large population of distractors. Traditionally, or still remain to be one of the focus, is people using face recognition. But in those environments, faces are very small, and the videos giving a lot of motion blur to facial images. And in large-scale surveillance videos, that facial images don't appear for more than 10% of the data. So you don't have that many faces to utilize. So here's an example of what a person re education would do. So usually they start with a very large possibility of candidates uh, over a very large space in public domain. So it can be over tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. And objectives you're trying to search and reduce down to a very small uh, handful of possibilities. So over the last decade, starts from about uh, 2007, 2008, uh, the community has made significant progress. Uh, there are a number of uh, benchmark data sets being created. Um, the currently one of the largest one is called Market and has over 32,000 images and over 1,500 people. Um, so the current uh, state of the art in terms of progress, uh, over the last six years, you can see that uh, it's been made uh, steady progress and the um, performance of the native model now it can reach more than 90%. However, this is all based on supervised learning. So in person re identification, supervised learning means very strong assumption. So this is an assumption we make that we actually need pairwise neighboring and the strongest model, currently one of the strongest models, is using triple odd knots, and that requires pairwise uh, enabling. That means in each of the scene, camera one, you have a collection of people. You need to manually label pairwise both positive and negative pairs, often more than one pair, uh, sets against another camera, and you need to do that exhaustively for all the cameras. So that's that imposes a huge constraint, and it's very strong constraint. For the fact that in natural environment, not many people reappear in other cameras. So it's not just a question of you can, whether you can label them and identify them, and it's also a question they don't really exist. So the amount of data you can collect to perform that exhaustive cross-camera view labeling is limited. So in this work, we're trying to expand and trying to explore completely unsupervised RID by utilizing tracklet associations. So we're going back to some of the, the early works in object tracking, particularly uh, relating to some of work in multi-camera or multi-object tracking. So in tracklet, you would have no labels, and, uh, but you actually, usually also you have a lot of data, but you also in, uh, encounter some difficulties. So there's a lot of occlusion and also fragmentation of tracklet, and particularly in public space, you have a lot of ID switch. So that can cause uh, difficulties when you're trying to uh, match tracklet. Related works, um, particularly on unsupervised uh, personal ID. So the uh, effort that, uh, and also the um, realization that we can't rely on strongly supervised uh, training data um, in order to scale up the personal ID to practical use, uh, has enabled in the last year the 
There's a whole bunch of uh, work coming up, and uh, all trying to expand into unsupervised learning, and can broadly categorize into transfer learning and unsupervised learning. So the performance on the unsupervised learning techniques are significantly uh, lower or worse than the supervised learning. So uh, the, the best model currently is about 63% rather than over 90%. So there's a reduction of over 30% uh, in recognition accuracy. But the progress has been made over a year. Over a year, that, that significant progress has also been made. So the key idea for this work is we try to explore three um, concepts. The first one is how do we collect chocolate data for model training? So once you actually uh, process videos, often uh, in real time, you obtain very large quantity of chocolates. Often they are fragmented, or uh, continuous uh, chocolates don't really exist in a very crowded environment. And so you need to find a way to sample them and, 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 and the sample in such a way that is sufficient for model training. The second one is we're trying to explore uh, within view tracklet uh, differentiation. So we're trying to maximize in within view tracklet differentiation. And in the meantime, we're trying to discover between view linkage of tracklet. So there are three models uh, that we proposed in this work uh, to address those problems. So the first one is chocolate sampling, uh, something we call sparse space-time chocolate. Uh, there are two observations that uh, after we process a lot of uh, chocolates, uh, hundreds of thousands of chocolates, and we realize uh, in order to sample, we don't need to exhaustively sample all the chocolates. We just need to sample randomly a proportion of chocolates from the data pool we can process, and it's unlimited. And you, actually, one of the things you notice is that in order to uh, maximize the unique tracklet, you need to sample a spatially large gap. So when the track, tracklet uh, fragment, you, you can avoid a lot of duplications. The objective is you want to have as less duplication as possible in order for you to train a good model. The second aspect is we also sample them observing that lots of tracklet are spatially co-occurring. So if they're spatially apart, they're more likely to be uh, different chocolate or chocolates associated with different people. And so we explore those two uh, principles and to sample a very large quantity of chocolate in order to uh, have sufficient uh, training data. So this, the next aspect is we're trying to maximize in within view chocolate differentiation. And this is based on assumptions that frames in each chocolate generally depict the same person. And often, poor frames, likely to be caused by ID switch or occlusion, uh, can be measured by uh, a seminary distance to its chocolate representation, we call an anchor uh, in a feature space. And this is a part of the learning objective. So the, uh, the, uh, the loss function, we're trying to uh, uh, optimize this uh, first inter, uh, uh, within camera tracklet discrimination is we actually uh, introduce a uh, classification uh, entropy loss. And this is trying to penalize a poor frame in tracklet and, and resulting in optimizing tracklet representation uh, in an anchor. So usually it's a distribution representation or center uh, in the feature space for that tracklet. And we update all chocolate anchors within each view and in each of the mini batch uh, in the uh, deep model learning. And then we concurrently uh, update for all chocolates of all the views. So essentially, it's a multi task learning. For the cross camera chocolate association, uh, the objective here is uh, we're trying to discover uh, the most likely linkage or association between cameras of tracklets of similar characteristics. And so this, uh, the assumption is based on cross-camera tracklets of the same person are nearest labors in a shared global cross-camera feature space. And this is the second learning objective for the model. So here we actually particularly uh, explore an idea known as uh, supervised distribution alignment. Um, so there are two pieces of work related to this. Uh, one of them is uh, histogram loss, 
But his one loss is designed for supervised learning. And another one is a surrogate loss. Uh, but that one is real, uh, has very uh, strong demand of a pre-processing global clustering uh, mechanism. And it's quite sensitive to that, me uh, that mechanism. So our model is trying to avoid uh, a requirement for pre-processing global clustering. And the model itself, it learns uh, intrinsically. So the overall uh, model uh, takes in the form of you have initial uh, tracked sampling, and then you train a REST net 50. And the, then there are two and uh, three, uh, actually two types of uh, uh, loss functions being posed. One of them are within camera uh, no code discrimination, and be then be between camera uh, global association uh, discovery. And all those are performed on all the cameras uh, within a given uh, environment. So the model is evaluated against um, three, currently the largest uh, image-based ReID datasets, and also three uh, video-based ReID datasets. Um, market and the mass are shared from the same source, but one of them is image-based. The video-based is much larger, it's over 3 million uh, data samples. So uh, we're trying to evaluate it. You can consider most of the image-based are spatial cases for video. So there are multi-shells, essentially a, a small sets of images. Um, so for videos, uh, the model performs well against the current existing techniques and also for images. But the take-home message I want to draw attention to is Comparing with a benchmark supervised model, uh, the unsupervised techniques still significantly underperform. And so this is understandable because we use much less knowledge. And, and the advantage of unsupervised, it's much more scalable. So we don't need to assume uh, the availability of the labels. So the take home message is this. So in this work, we actually perform unsupervised personal ID and aim for enabled domain adaptation. And we're also trying to explore bridging uh, personal ID with multi-camera, multi-object tracking. And there are two, uh, two related work, which is something we, uh, we, are, we are very uh, uh, conscious about, is the underperformance of uh, completed unsupervised methods. So one of them is we're trying to explore uh, transfer learning use other knowledge, intermediate like attributes. And so this is one of the papers we present early in CVPR 18. And also, how do we expose sparsely labeled uh, uh, image with very large quantity of unlabeled videos? And there's, a, there's work presented yesterday uh, on, on that topic using semi-supervised memory. And there's a poster uh, this afternoon or later today. Uh, at, uh, please go have a look. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you'd like to take a couple of questions from the audience, again, if you could wave your hand so we could um, identify where you are, that would help us out. Okay. Uh, maybe while you're asking or thinking of a question, um, I'd like to ask a question. So I think the performance of the re-ID um, obviously depends very, very much on how well you do your tracklet association. So if your tracklet association is bad, then the unsupervised re-ID is also going to be That's there. right. OK, so, so in many ways, now the tracklet association. So the first step, what I would call to purify the tracklet within each view, is actually quite important. So what the objective is you want to make sure the representation of each tracklet is as clean as possible. So they're as discriminative. And, and you can do that because we explore intrinsically uh, the limitation of space time. So they're within a confined space, even in a wide field view. Um, so I think I, I was talking to one of uh, students from Oxford. They're actually exploring similar ideas for face recognition. There's, I think there's a paper called the uh, Collaboration Network uh, in this conference as well. And so the idea is trying to minimize all the corruptions where you actually can be observed in a single view, and then use that to, to, to um, uh, discover a correlation. But even that, I think, fundamentally, is actually a very weak uh, constraint. So this is why I think we need to explore other uh, knowledge, which you have some label information from other data sets. So uh, either through uh, training like a, a, a attributes, a latent space to project into new domains. One of the difficulties in reality is that you don't have shared ID space. So all the 
the class labels from different uh, locations, uh, uh, domains, they're completely independent. Mm -hmm. So you can't actually say, I learned something here and just blindly apply somewhere else. And uh, secondly, how do we explore some small quantity of label data, but a very large quantity of unlabeled data, and to, to link those with, with the tracted association, I think that's actually uh, could be important. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other uh, questions from the audience? Well, thank you very much for the presentation.